Hi, I'm Nick Bonner for TreeStuff.com. I'm here at the Adelwood World Headquarters again with Martin. And Martin, this is a rope raider, huh? This is a rope raiding machine. Finally, we made it down I'm here. excited to see. Walk us through how the rope raiding works. So actually, uh, rope raiding machinery and the technology is uh, pretty simple, I would say. So we have a main motor driving the machinery, and then we have the bobbins running around here. And we have different ways of setting up the machinery. So in this case, we have uh, a one over one braiding. So if you see this pair of material, it's just running over this pair of material, and then below that one. So what we're creating over here, it's just uh, a one over one braid. So and we can see this bobbin that we started looking at is actually traveling all the way around. It's driving all the way around. Half of the bobbins are right, driving around uh, clockwise and half uh, of the bobbins uh, is driving around anti-clockwise. And uh, on this braiding machinery, we have a lot of uh, options to get a rope to be a good rope or to be a rope we as Edelred think this is uh, an Edelred rope. So for example, if you look over here, there's a, a brake former. We wouldn't need that, so actually the braiding would happen automatically. But in order to control that, uh, we control, control the height of the braiding point. As well, we do have a spring over here, and the spring is uh, responsible for the tension uh, to give free the yarn on the carrier. If we change the uh, spring in here and the spring load in here, we can change the amount of core material we are pressing into the rope. So if we're pressing a lot of core into the rope, it gets, gets very pressure stable, the rope. As well, we do have a, a gear over here, which is transmitting the, uh, the speed of the carriers to the, to the gear, which is making the uptake. So if we change the gears in here, we can pull the rope through rather quickly. And this is given a very loose braid, and this is very bending, instable in the rope. So we're braiding it very close, so slow, putting out uh, speed, then it's going to be very stiff concerning the bending stability. And so we have a lot of factors over here we can work through and apply to get a rope the way we want to have it. And it sounds like as much as it's technical engineering and planning, but it's also a little bit of like trial and error, kind of like a measure carpenter versus a trim carpenter. Yeah, sure. I would not say it's trial and error. I would say it's knowledge we have in here. No, but for sure, it's a bit of trial and error. So first of all, if we start a development, we think about things we want to change. Then we think about the material we want to use to achieve this change. And then we come into the braiding machinery. And yes, we do have a lot of experience out of our 160 years history, but still we're setting it up then we do the, the testing and then we're coming up to change factors and the braiding machinery as long as we feel confident with the rope and we are, test, uh, we are passing all the tests we have to pass. And a really interesting fact is that this, uh, this melding of the current and the mantle, Adelaide invented that. True, uh, we, uh, we are the first brand which came up with this idea and I think this is this one thing we, which is within our DNA. So we try to think outside of the box to stay inventive, and I think this is, this is what's driving us within this company. Very interesting. Walk us through what's happening up here at the top. Um, yeah, so, so as mentioned, um, this, is, this is mostly um, the, the driving wheel, which is pulling the rope out of the, the braiding. And as mentioned, if we speed this up, um, we get a loose braid or we get a very close braid, and this is uh, determining the, the, the bending stability of a rope. Great. Can we walk over and look at one of the machines in action? So, let's do it. Okay, so, uh, yeah, this is what actually happens in uh, full speed. So what we're doing over here um, is the output of the machinery is roughly a thousand meters per 24 hours. And, uh, yeah. This is why, compared to what I just showed you, actually, you can't again really see what's happening because they have to run a certain speed to get the amount of material out of the machine. Looking at the top here, is the rope going like this or is it actually rotating? No, it's just a little bit moving from left to, to right. It's not twisting at all, um, but this is just to you to the, to the, to the uptake. And, uh, this is a really incredible machine. 
So this year with the uh, 48 Miriam machine, it's hard to tell that the bobbins are moving around. It almost looks like they're just yeah. interchanging. Yeah. Now you get you get really used to it if you're working a lot of it. So uh, we would be in a position to really follow a bobbin. And then for example, you have to be very careful about the color pattern because if one, the first and the second bobbin are going to run across and then the color pattern is going to change. So before setting up the machinery, you always have to take care of uh, that the bobbins are right and the, the, the yarn is not running over another. And so normally if, if you start working with the machinery, you really have to do it in slow pace. If you have the people uh, working in here for years, it's just been seen like on the full speed of the machine. Martin, thank you so much for sharing uh, the, how the grading machines work. Can you tell me what the next step is? The next step would be for dry treated ropes. We only have the only have the core treated up until now, so we have to treat the whole rope or in order to get the sheet treated as well. Great, well we'll check that out in a separate video and you can see the entire Edelred rope making process on our YouTube channel. Martin, thank you so much. Oh.